What's up guys, this is Dennis with 21 Grams. Welcome back to the channel. Um, today we're gonna make a short video answering some of the questions that you guys presented on the Leather Tattoo Machine uh, group on Facebook. So if you're not a part of that group and you have some questions or you just wanna be part of the community around this tool, please join it. Um, we're gonna get right into the, the Q&A of this video. So um, we're gonna go over some of the questions that you had as well as some of the techniques that I can show you to help improve your experience with this machine. So um, I know quite a few have gone out so far, so this is perfect timing to uh, answer some of the questions that you have in real time now that you've been able to use the tool. So uh, yeah, let's dive right into it. Okay, the first question that I want to address is, do you case the leather the same way you would when you're doing traditional tooling, carving and tooling? And the answer is yes. It is literally the exact same. So if, uh, if you case your leather, which I'm sure you do when you're carving and uh, tooling, then you're gonna wanna do that the same here. Um, I always recommend putting enough water to saturate about uh, a third to a half of the way through the leather. Um, you don't want to soak it completely so that it's just uh, waterlogged, but you wanna be able to get some moisture in it. So that's what we're doing here. Uh, then, uh, yeah, you'll, you'll be able to see how that affects the leather. All right, for this first um, cartridge tip, whatever you wanna call it, um, I'm gonna start with the thin liner. This is probably what is going to be used the most. Um, what I like to do is I like to start this off at um, 8.5. That seems to be a good place to start with this particular cartridge. It's punchy. You want this to be able to uh, almost replace your swivel knife. So I, I have it at a higher uh, voltage for this and I'm gonna show you what that looks like and then I'm gonna show you what it looks like if you slow it down. All right, so I'm gonna pull it in a little bit. Twisting this is going to adjust the depth of your needle here. So I made it so that it came in a little bit. So you can see this is at 8.5. Nice, crisp line. Easy to fill in really small areas. Um, yeah, that's what the, this is where I keep this this cartridge at in particular. So let's uh, let's take it down to say six point five, and I'll show you that it's uh, still good. You just got to move your hand a bit slower. What I'll do in lowering the voltage with this particular uh, tip is I'll use it. Uh, at this voltage when I'm going to be doing like stipple work because it slows it down and you're going to be able to get more of the dot action that you're looking for out of this if you're using this for stipple work. So I'll show you a little bit more here. And the faster you move, the further the stipples are going to be away from each other. And the concept of this is it's based off of my experience in tattooing. So this would be like whip shading. It's the exact same thing. And the reason why I made this is because you're not able to really do this with a checkered beveler or anything else that I personally found. Maybe you guys have, but that's what I'm trying to duplicate here. Um, not all of these tools are going to be direct one-to-one uh, -to, -one to the tools that you're used to. This is untraditional, and uh, we're kind of just making it up as we go. So that's what this is for. That's the voltage that I like to use it at. Um, now we're gonna go over a few more. All right, the next one we're gonna go over is we're gonna go over the, um, we're gonna go over the shader needle or cart cartridge. So this has three points on it. 
they're much sharper than the other ones, which the other ones are quite a bit like more rounded off and doled out. Um, these have three points to them and I'll show you how you're going to use this. So you want to crank the voltage down a lot. So I usually run it right about five to five and a half, but I'm going to start it at five. And what you're going to do with this is, again, you can adjust it. Each cartridge is going to be slightly different, so get used to moving this around. Um, you're going to just let it dance over the top. Don't, don't dig into the leather. That's where you're going to end up pulling the leather out and giving you that kind of teared look. This is going to just barely kind of dance on the top. And that's what's going to give you the thinner stipple and more of the shading effect. This is going to be for more detailed work if you're into doing portrait stuff. Um, for my understanding, too, is people like to use this as a backgrounder. Um, you can get into small, tight areas. But you can see it's very, very light. Do very, very light. Um, less is more with this particular tip and slowing down the the speed is going to give you a lot more control and it's also going to make it so that you're not tearing up your leather as much there's just less power going to it this is more for um, refined work that's what I find that's what I use it for all right and we'll move on to some of the beveler um, cartridges now all right, we're gonna start with the smallest beveler first. This is pretty tiny, very good for detail. I say beveler too, just so you guys understand. It's not gonna be one-to-one. -one. There's no one-to-one -one from what you're used to. And you're gonna be able to find different usage, usages for each one of these tips and use it for that. Explore, have fun, um, and make it work for you. That's kind of the whole idea of this entire tool is just to have fun, figure it out, see where it fits into your toolbox. So with that said, I'm going to turn this up quite a bit and it's at five, I'll flip it around. It's at five, hopefully that shows up and it's not too blinky for you guys. Um, I'm gonna put it right about seven and uh, yeah, we'll go from here. So that gives you kind of a rough idea of where I like to keep it at. Um, I'm also going to show you here in a second how this compares to a traditional beveler, as well as how it works when you um, use a swivel knife blade to be able to cut into it as kind of a foundation. There's another technique that I'm going to show with the bigger uh, beveler tools that I use. I actually use it for more than actual beveling. And uh, we'll do that right now because I'm going to go into the larger beveler tool right now. Okay, this is going to be the larger beveler, the red tip one. And uh, so I like to turn it up quite a bit. I would say maybe at least 8, 8.5. You're going to, you know, it's going to work differently with your machine and what your needs are. So don't be scared to mess around with the voltage. Um, this is just a rough guideline. So... All of this is a rough guideline because the way I work might be different than you. But um, yeah, so here, here's uh, how this works at eight. Now you may have noticed that I was kind of switching the angles like this. We're gonna go over that in a future segment, 
um, in this video, but in a little bit about how you can get the differences um, by by moving your wrist. So like I said before, I'm gonna show you where I, I like that tool in particular. So I'm gonna go back to the, um, the thin liner and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So if I'm kind of filling in an area, let's say that for some reason, there's an area about this big and I want to be able to get a lot of depth out of it. Then I'm going to whip shade and get that depth really good. Okay, now I'm going to show you what I use it for the most. I, I use it as a beveler as well, but so I'll put it in and once that's kind of, um, Shape the way that you want to. I mean, all of this is in three-dimensional, right? Like we're trying to get depth in our work. Um, I'll, I'll drop, uh, I'll keep it around eight and then work from there, see what, what works best. Um, so I'll turn that on and then I use it as like a thumper. Like think of a, um, like a, one of those machines, not a jackhammer, but the thing that like pats down asphalt I know that's weirdly specific, but that's what I always think of when, I, uh, when I'm using this. So essentially you're, you're able to smooth out all of the stippling effect and uh yeah i mean that that's kind of where i use it the most it smooths it down so you don't get all of the like dot looks that you see over here and uh you're still able to i mean think that this is your cut and you're still able to push out your bevel so much further than you would traditionally and that's what i like it for that that's the the goal of what i'm trying to do so um yeah, that kind of just demonstrates how each one of these tips works at different voltages. And uh, that I can't reiterate, just mess with it. Like get a piece of scrap leather, get it cased, uh, then uh, just mess mess with your tool at different voltages and see where it is that, that you like it. That That's what's most important. Um, I'll change the voltage for different effects that I'm trying to get. So I recommend that you doing it too and getting to know your machine. It's, it's, it's going to change from machine to machine to person to person, the leather, the thickness, all of that kind of stuff. Now I'd like to show you a close up of how each tool works, where you're able to really see how it penetrates the leather and get an idea of uh, what it should look like when you do it. So starting with the thin liner, And then kind of the stipple effect. You're going to push in, uh, then kind of sweep it out, coming out into, like, re coming up off of the leather as it moves towards yourself. And then if you want to get really tight into an area um, and give some depth, you can just do little circles. So that's the thin liner. And then the thick liner. Again, adjust for what you need.
You can use it as a liner or again as like a stipple shader. All right, now we'll move on to the actual round shader. I'm gonna lower the voltage on this to around five, which I can't see, but you can, or 5.5. .5. And then this, hopefully you'll be able to see better. You're really just going to let it dance on the top. Very, very soft. Less is more when it comes to this one. This is going to give you the fine detail that uh, you really can't get any other way. And you're going to do kind of the same effect as we were doing before with the liner. You're going to just kind of scratch across the top, but you're going to do kind of this motion with your wrist. Drop it and then kind of sweep it back to you, lifting up slightly. All right, and then we'll move on to the small, what we're calling the small beveling tool. Um, again, <clears throat> apples and oranges. If you like the way a beveling tool works um, better, <clears throat> by all means use that. But this is an option and I think that it fits in your toolbox. Um, so I'm gonna put that at eight voltages. I'm not sure if that's what I said to put it last time because like I've mentioned a couple times now, um, it, it, it could change. Start somewhere, add a little bit if you want, take away a little bit if you want. So this, you can see here, I kind of keep at an angle. You want to use this corner here and put that into where you want your line or where, where, yeah, where you want your line and then you're pushing out this way. Um, and if you want to, you're able to get more of a V effect if you want where there's a bevel on both sides. Um, that's going to all come down to how you hold your wrist this way or this way. Um, all right, now we're going to move on to the medium beveler, which is of all of these is what I use the most um, by far. So again, starting at, um, at eight, you can see here, if I wanna add, I can add. Then if you want your bevel to go further out this way, just switch your hand from this to slightly this way. And then you're able to give like a real smooth, a smooth look this way. And you can really take it out as far as you want. You can feather it and get it perfect, just how you'd like. All right, so we're gonna move on to the largest of the beveler set. Again, like I mentioned before, um, this is this is what I'm calling the beveler set. What you guys know is the beveler set, but um, it is a whatever you need it for set. <laughs> so if you uh, if you want it for Smoothing out your stipple work, that's totally what it's for then. Okay, so same concept. Put it at an angle. So that, that, that's each one of the cartridges 
uh, close up so you can see what it looks like um, when you're using it. All right, so now I'm going to do my best to show you um, the comparison from traditional tools to using this machine. Um, it's like it, it's really like comparing apples to oranges. They're really not exactly the same at all, but people want to know and I want to show off how there are similarities and how there are differences. So um, first, I'm going to do a cut with the swivel knife. You might think this looks weird as a swivel knife because it, it is. It's a tattoo tube that I replaced the tip with a swivel knife blade. Um, people ask me about it all the time. I'm self-taught. I never learned how to use a swivel knife. And if you guys haven't figured it out, I tattooed for a very long time. So the muscle memory of this makes a lot more sense to me than using a swivel knife. And what I found from a lot of people is using something like this is easier on their hands and it gets over that initial hump of frustration trying to learn how to use a swivel knife. So enough about that. I'm going to show you what it looks like in comparison. So let's say um, I'm going to do just a standard regular cut. That's what that's going to look like. Try to show it to the screen a little bit better standard you know that's what you're going to cut into uh, then i'm going to show the equivalence of using the thin liner because that's what i would imagine is the the most accurate and similar so um again going to turn this up to okay, turn it back on to about 8.5 start there So you'll be able to see here the difference. This is going to be a little bit thicker as an initial cut. Um, but I, I feel like you have a lot more control using this. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. So let's say you're going to do some kind of writing. This is where this comes in incredibly well, at least for me. Um, using this, I was never able to do any kind of um, script writing. So let's say... I'm gonna write 21 grams. And you might be able to do this better with a swivel knife. In fact, I'm sure you can, um, but I can't. And there's other people that can't. So um, there's gonna be people I'm sure in the comments that say I could do it as good, if not better with a swivel knife. And I don't doubt you, but I can't, so. Let's see. Grams. I'm trying to make it as curvy as possible. And the S, of course, is all curves. So that's about as good as I could get quickly. It looks horrible. So I'm going to use the thin liner in the same way. And I'll show you, and keep in mind, my handwriting is horrible. So, here we go. Also, another thing to consider, every once in a while, you might want to twist this and push it in really solid. They come loose, it's vibrating. Again, my handwriting isn't great, but personally, I prefer the bottom one. Much faster, much cleaner, in my opinion. This is what I like. So if you're doing like a fancy script writing and you don't want to have to bevel out of everything and you're just, you're not as solid with your swivel knife, this, the, the, this machine and this setup alone is worth it to me in that way. If I knew that I could do better script writing for the kind of work that I do, this makes sense just for that alone. So we'll move on to a couple of the other um, tools and or the tips and show you comparisons there as well. Okay, so the next the next phase is probably the, gonna be the most common where 
one people ask the most the comparison from traditional beveling and um, using the machine to bevel so this again is going to be apples and oranges and this is where i think i, I humbly <laughs> say that maybe traditional beveling is going to be better for most people at the phase of the prototype now things are going to improve over time that's how things work so but i will show you the difference so using a knife and then using a beveling tool smooth looks great love it so in the same way I'm going to carve because people also ask that how it would look if I carved down a line first with a regular uh, a regular uh, swivel knife so I'm gonna go with the medium beveler first to kind of give an idea switching this to seven volts to start off and then let's see how this works So you can see there, similar, maybe slightly different. And you may like one or the other, or this might be something that you want to use in place of traditional tapping because you have hand issues. Um, we're going to try one more with the beveler using the knife and we'll use the, actually we'll do both of them. We'll do the large and the small. That way you guys can see every aspect of it. So keeping it at seven, adjusting this. So that's what the Bigger one, obviously if you take a little bit more time as you get used to it and get better with it, it's gonna get better. I've been tooling normally for a very long time. So um, this is a bit different. And this is the small beveler, which in my opinion works really, really well if you're trying to compare the, the beveling of a traditional tool compared to using this. And I'll show you guys a close up for complete transparency. So this is, you know, um, carving a line in with your, with your swivel knife and using a traditional beveler. This is the carving a line in and using the med medium um, beveler, large, other than the small. The small is gonna provide the cleanest look and uh, for actual beveling, I prefer the small. Um, I use the large beveler for what I'm gonna show you guys next. All right. All right, so for this part, I'm gonna show you how a traditional checkered beveler compares to using a similar technique or a similar look um, using the tips and the machine. So. I'm gonna go ahead, cut the line in here. Here's my checker tool. So this is a good opportunity in telling you exactly why I actually um, wanted to make this tool or something similar is because the amount that this checkered goes out isn't what I wanted. I wanted to be able to go out much further so that's what I'm going to show you here.
So I'm gonna flip it this way. I'm gonna take my thin liner, turn it back up again to eight and a half. But this right here is the reason why I wanted to do this. That's about as far out from your line you're able to, to take a, a checkered beveler. And to me, it doesn't really look like um, whip shading or stipple shading that you would get from a tattoo machine. And this is more what I wanted. Obviously, I could take the time and do it really smooth. And without a camera right in front of my face, it's a lot easier. But... The main point is I just wanted to show you how they compare so that they make more sense. It make it makes more sense. So I'm gonna show you where I really love the large beveler. I kinda I kinda hinted on this before, but I just want to show one more time. So that's where the large beveler shines. Um, again, I haven't found tools. And again, I know there's going to be people in the comments that everything I say, it's the opposite. So, um, But I haven't been able to find a beveler that comes that far off of your original cut. And uh, that's what I wanted. So that's what I made. That's, that's where I think that the large beveler shines, where I think the small beveler shines. Um, when doing traditional beveling and uh yeah that that's kind of an, an overview um without being too hyper detailed um a lot of this stuff you're gonna have to you know learn as you go that's the whole idea of this something that we can all share together and build a community around as we learn all right so another question that i was asked about was how to use this tape what's it for um with every kit that I send out, I send one of these as well. Some people want to use it, some people don't, but I figure send it with it, you know? You guys are spending good money, and uh, yeah, I figured it'd be a nice gesture. So this is to create a little bit of cushioning on your hand. Um, if you're gonna be working like myself for hours and hours and hours, just having a little bit of padding helps. Also, it creates a little bit more of a, gr a grip so that this isn't as slippery. And if you want to create a thicker grip around it, that's what this is for too. So I'll show you how to apply it. You're gonna want to not cover this hole because that's where you're gonna put your cartridge. You want this area to be as clear as possible um, so that there isn't any kind of hangups when you put your cartridges in. So you're gonna start here just like this making sure not to go in to the, the hole there that you're gonna put your cartridge. It can overlap a little bit. Oops. It's a little tricky to get started. Once you get it started, you're good to go. So start the wrapping process. Again, you can use as little uh, as you want or as much as you want. Say that's how much you want, just just to create a little bit of grip onto your uh, your grip. I mean, that's what that's called. So you can just rip that off. Save the rest if you want to. Um, tighten it up. Push this down here. Get that nice and tight in there. Not in there, but around there so there's less. Another thing is you don't want to... You want there to be a little, you only want to get the grip, not the body. Otherwise, this won't be able to be adjustable. So just go up to where the grip ends. A way to do that that I found to be the easiest is rather than trying to wrap it when it's your grip is right against the body of the machine, just kind of retract it a little bit so that there's a gap. Then wrap it and you're ready to go. And that's how you wrap your machine with the grip tape. Um, 
yeah, you can use it. You don't have to use it. You can use more. You can make it. You can make it bigger. Um, it's it's really up to you. If you haven't if you haven't noticed a theme, a lot of this stuff is up to you, <laughs> and there's no rules. So just make it up as you go. Enjoy. I hope that this portion helps you understand how to to wrap your grip. All right. Another question I got asked was how it works differently on different thicknesses of leather. So this is a four to five ounce uh, natural veg tan from the leather company. And uh, then this is going to be a uh, eight to nine ounce natural veg tan from the leather company. And hopefully you can see the difference in thickness here. Um, this is gonna be the thinner, this is gonna be the thicker. And I just wanna show you what the difference is. So using this on thinner leather is going to give you, you know, kind of the results that you saw earlier. Okay, you get the idea show you what the small beveler looks like again just okay so what the difference I find is using thin leather compared to thick leather is you get more depth there's more leather it's thicker if I'm going to do something as an art piece I'm going to use something thicker like an eight to nine ounce like this if I'm going to do a wallet I'm going to use you know, something that is thinner, obviously. So um, with the thicker leather, you're able to get much deeper into the leather. So I'll kind of show you what that looks like. And the thin liner does a really good representation of being able to show you. So. So you can see the depth of it you can get really, really deep with it. That's the only difference. It works exactly the same. You're gonna case the leather exactly the same. Everything is exactly the same. So if you're gonna use natural veg tan, like carving leather, it's gonna work just the same on any thickness that you have. So keep moving forward on whatever you have. Obviously thinner leather, like a two ounce, that might not be the best thing <laughs> because you might be able to get some indentions on the back. This you won't. So um, that was the that was the question originally was if I could show different um, thicknesses and how it works, so that you can you can see what it looks like on something thinner, something thicker, and then show that it doesn't it doesn't come through on the other side. So I hope that answers your question about this. All right, guys, thanks for joining me on another video. Um, I hope I was able to answer your questions. If you have more questions, head over to the Leather Tattoo Machine Facebook group or the Instagram. It's both the Leather Tattoo Machine. And uh, one, ask more questions so I can make another video of this. And two, submit your artwork. Um, whatever you submit, I'm going to post. But I wanted to address a couple questions that I think might help you guys understand that weren't necessarily questions asked to me. So one of them being, why do I use different machines in different parts of my videos? And to answer that is because I've bought a lot of machines and um, I feel like I'm at a level where I can tell the difference and just the most slight thing. I bought these machines because I wanted to test them out and see the how they were com compatible with what I was doing. So that's why you'll see me use different machines than you sometimes. Um, you can always upgrade your machines too. I'm not stopping you from doing that. Um, number two regarding the machine is why some people have different machines than um, others that come in the, in, in the kit and it's because there's been a huge demand. I've, I've sold almost 200 of these things 
and it's really hard to be able to find a supplier that's consistent, that can deliver them as fast as I can send them out. Well, with that said, I just want to thank you guys for joining me in uh, this video and all of the support. This has been fantastic. I really feel that there's a community growing around this and something that you probably know by everything that I've said in this video is that this isn't necessarily here to replace all of your traditional tools. Um, I don't use many, but that's that's what I have. Um, for me, it's completely, a, you know, um, erase the need for those. And that's specifically because I designed this to work the way I want it for the way that I want the my work within Leathercraft to look. Um, that might not be the case for you. And I, I love that and I respect it. And I appreciate you guys joining me on this video. And until the next one, take care of yourself. Take care of the people you love.